Hey everyone, welcome back and welcome to Chassis Week. If you were with us last week, then you saw this for the first time. Uh, the model for the suspension of all the parts that we have. And it is now time to connect everything via the frame. So our main focus is looking at the lugs for the lower control arms, upper control arms, and the strut mount. Connecting each of those, I guess, probably five points for each corner of the vehicle uh, back to a, a central frame. So I think it's a good idea first to just take a look at what kind of frame the actual vehicles that these parts came off of have. And looking at this image here, you can see it. there's really, it, it's called a box frame. There's two long rectangular uh, column tubes that run the full length of the vehicle uh, with a couple of cross members. The body itself is mounted on top. It's a body on frame vehicle. Uh, in our case though, our bodywork and body is not going to be structural. So in that case, you kind of move towards what's called a steel tube space frame. So here's an example of that just from a, a random buggy I found online. Uh, this is much more similar to what we're going to be looking at. The only real issue that we have with the design of this buggy is that the suspension points are all attached to the uh, space frame tubing via these sheet metal tabs. And in most cases, these are perfectly fine. However, in our case, if you look at how large the size of our lugs are here, you end up with tabs that have to be really long to actually get it back to the frame. And as a result, they have to be beefier, you have to put in gussets, and it kind of compounds the issue uh, space-wise that we already have. If you come strictly straight over inboard and run a tube there, you have a really narrow footwell in here. Vice versa, if you go up at all, then you're taking away your floor space. So really just have a lose-lose situation for how that's gonna be mounted to the frame. Uh, and so we're trying to look for an alternative way of doing that. So the best thing I could come up with after uh, several iterations was something similar to an aircraft frame. So looking at this image here, uh, it's a little bit different because we don't really have any suspension points to see how it manages to mount those. But the principles are that you have these uh, station lines down the length of the aircraft, or you can really see it in the wings here, uh, down the length of the wings that you have these frame sections. So the goal is for us to be able to do something kind of similar to that in order to make this mounting work with our body. So if I look in the side view of the car, we're kind of just looking at, okay, where can we identify those frame sections? And starting at the front, I think it's pretty clear that right here, both of these lugs are pretty much in line. So there's a good candidate there. These guys are offset a little bit. We're gonna have to deal with something there, but nothing, nothing crazy. In the back, we have a very similar situation. The rear two points are very closely aligned. The front two are slightly offset. If I actually bring in the body outline that we have, it makes sense here that we're also going to have a larger hoop running down the center here that's going to be the main roll hoop behind the driver's head. We're also going to put in a hoop for the front bulkhead of the vehicle. So I've gone ahead and converted all of the solid bodies into these sort of line models that we have here and it's going to be a much easier way for us to actually model the cross sections of the chassis. And we're going to start by looking at the front suspension first. So like I said, rather than running tubes lengthwise, we're instead looking at these horizontal sections. So I've gone ahead and just aligned these so that kind of runs through the point of the upper control arm down to the lower control arm and across, and we give ourselves enough space to actually mount something. It looks a lot clearer when I actually populate some tubes here. You can see our lugs are going to sit in between the tubes, and everything looks nice and happy there and we maximize the foot space that we have available. Next we just continue this on up through the upper control arms and all we have is two simple hoops here that fit inside the body of the octane. The easiest thing then is just to move forward a little bit and do the front of the octane. This again is, is nothing crazy. We're just going to throw another loop in here that follows that kind of contour of the body throwing a little bit of triangular bracing, and we're, 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 we're going. 
And just like that, I mean, we've got the nose tied up and we have everything for the suspension except for this axis representing the, uh, the spring and damper, the shock. To make things easier, I went ahead and just sort of copied this hoop straight on back. This gives us a nice flat section line here so that anything you know, further back, we aren't trying to work with this odd step in here. It's just a nice even uh, surface. I went ahead and just threw these tubes in here for now, uh, but like I said, that's subject to change. Once again, you can really see how it just sort of tucks in slightly under the body. Now we could keep working back through the cockpit here, uh, but because we have so much design freedom, we can do whatever we want there. It's better off to finish fully defining what we can't control. And so we're gonna hop back to the rear, do everything that we did with the front, and then connect it through the, through the middle. So once again, here's our lower subframe, very similar to the front, rather than having any angle to the side tubes though, they are straight up and down uh, with the way the octane looks in the back. It's a little bit boxier and we have a little bit more freedom with what we wanna do and, and having these nice 90 degrees is gonna make mounting and any bodywork attachments or anything a lot easier to work with. So we go ahead and do that. Now at this point, I really could have continued going up and looking at the upper control arms here and hindsight, I should have. Um, Instead, I, I kind of wasn't sure really where everything was going to be. I mean, this was a process that over a couple of, of weeks, if not uh, a month or two, took place, kind of iterative designs going back and forth, trying to see what seemed to work best. Uh, so in this case, I actually went in and drew in the main roll hoop, which again, is just that top point back behind the driver's head that in the event of a rollover, you're not relying on the body to, to really provide any structural uh, protection it's just the frame underneath that's giving you everything it's the same thing that you do with uh, a roll cage in any sort of uh, racing vehicle and really this just gives us a place to reference where we're going in a little bit and just to showcase some of that iterative side of things i mean here this sketch shows kind of this lower cockpit geometry how those tubes are going to be aligned uh final result is actually going to have about half of these changed so it really doesn't mean anything at this point. You just have to do something and hope it works and then kind of come back and fix it up later if you realize there's a better way of doing it. So we'll ignore those two tubes for now and go ahead and go back to the upper rear suspension. We're just going to extend some of these tubes and make uh, a bit of a box. And once again, these tubes are just running along past the actual mount point and we're going to connect with a, a bushing or something else later on. Once again, this all just maximizes our interior space. In this case, in the rear, we're really looking at how we're going to mount the drivetrain and the engine back in here. Populate a couple more tubes, and we're, we're starting to look a little bit like a, like a chassis. Not so much like an octane quite yet, but it's, it's getting there. The only real part left is to connect the main roll hoop to the rear suspension here. And so really just connecting the nodes that we've already established with the tubes that we already have. Uh, we buy ourselves a little bit of space on the bottom with these bent tubes so that we can fit an engine in there nice and easy. And here you can actually see the revised uh, tubing for this center part of the, the cockpit that I ended up coming back later and doing. Uh, this is mostly actually to give driver clearance to actually get out the side of the vehicle. One of the things we were looking at doing originally was actually coming out the top. Uh, but with the way the structure and everything with the body seemed to work, it was going to be a really big hassle. So we kind of reverted back to just a normal... Uh, get out the side of the car maybe maybe Lambo style doors you know who knows that's that's to be determined uh, but this just buys us space for the time being we're not restricting the driver trapping them you know to their death inside of this uh, metal cage we're going to throw in these uh, rear roll hoop supports um, the octane does get pretty large back in here and so we're going to have to have an additional sort of I call it a subframe but it's not sub it's really an over frame uh, to actually look at connecting the rear wing and uh, a couple other of the aesthetic items uh, but as far as the core part of the chassis is concerned we're going to ignore that for now and just put in these supports as well as populate the rest of these tubes in the rear so now we're looking at the upper supports these are what are going to run along the top of the octane and provide a little bit of support in a rollover incident not that we really expect to have one but we're just sort of trying to design to standards um, that are already established with like club racing just so we have an added factor of safety these guys just follow the line of the window actually, but it just kind of follows that outline. 
and, and there we go that's most of it um one of the things we have left to do is still fix some of these tubes here and then for the actual attachment points i mean obviously none of these tubes are sort of profiled or have any of the features in them so i'm going to fast forward um and just show the results of when we clean everything up and put in all the mounting points there we go i'm going to hide the sketches that way we can see what it just looks like we've got these slots in the bottom that gives us a little bit of control uh, with the lower control arms with doing our alignment uh, the uppers we're going to use some bushings to weld them into those mounts there in the rear we had to rework this a little bit overall i think it looks looks pretty good i mean we can throw the body back in here and you can once again kind of see in the rear that we're gonna to have to eventually do more when we look at the other meshes for the remaining aesthetic parts of the octane but overall like this front half especially really matches the profile that we're dealing with switching back to the other model we can now break it all right there we go that's that's fixed but you can see everything that we're looking at we got a much better use of, of space here it's going to give us room for a pedal box for the steering rack for the driver's feet everything uh, lines up a lot better there we still have to rework the front and rear uh, docks to see how we're actually going to finish mounting those uh, but everything else looks looks pretty solid throwing the body back in here you can actually see a little bit more um, i think we've done a good job of keeping everything tucked inside of the body I also love just playing with this section tool because everything just looks so cool. So there's definitely a little bit more work that needs to be done with this frame before we send it off for manufacturing. Um, but once we wrap up a couple of those small details, getting this actually uh, cut and welded up is the next really big step in making this a reality so that we can actually put together everything that you see here minus the actual body for now. The moment we can actually have this with some wheels sitting in a garage uh, start to feel real good about ourselves next week we're going to be looking at uh, the drivetrain so we'll be focusing on the rear and how the differential that i mentioned uh, a couple of minutes ago and how uh, it relates with these tubes down here how all that uh, fits in uh, so it's some more real parts some more uh, reverse engineering modeling and putting it in here and then we're going to actually make some more uh, custom parts that go with that so uh Stick around, we'll keep this going, and uh, I appreciate you. See you next week.